turn one sovereign. We would just, I would just cut it together with me and Riley. I just, okay. I would be like, oh, that's a really good, that's a really good I, idea there. I Eric. would just, I could make it. I, I think I could, I think I could make it work. Um, okay, well, we have a lot to cover today, so let's just get right into it. This is Turn One Soul Ring. I'm Kevin. Hey, I'm Eric. And I'm Riley. And today on the show, we are wrapping up our Innistrad Midnight Hunt set review. And if you're familiar with our set reviews, then you know that they are not exhaustive. We cover the cards we're interested in playing with in the formats that we play, which is most of them between the three of us. Uh, and as usual, we've gone through the cards in Wooburg order. Uh, and today we're going to be wrapping things up with the gold or the green gold colorless and land cards from the set that have tickled our fancy. But before we get to our first green card, Eric is going to let you all know how you can find us out there on the internet. You can find us at Turn One Soul Ring the Podcast on Instagram. Uh, you can message us directly via email at Turn One Soul Ring the Podcast at gmail.com. Turn One Soul Ring the Podcast, typing that in is the best way to find us. And also, we have something that's called the Patreon page. If you like what we're doing here, definitely check that out. Patreon.com slash Turn One Soul Ring. Without any further ado, our first green card is Augur of Autumn. It's one green green for a 2 3 human druid. And it says you may look at the top card of your library anytime, and you may play land cards from the top of your library. It also has the Coven ability. So as long as you control three or more creatures with different powers, you may cast creature spells from the top of your library. I mean, we were talking before we started recording that this is a lot like Corsair of Krufex, but that last ability is also a little bit like um, Vizier of the Menagerie. Vizier. Yeah. Vizier. Yeah. Yeah. Vizier. yeah. But Vizier. you guys like this card. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big. I fan. quite like it. You're you're in a creatures deck, um, so just being able to play lands, no matter what, is like a good ability, and it's just that you get to look at the top card, and then um, especially in the format of commander, I think you're gonna hit that coven ability a lot more than you think you will, mm -hmm. and then you just have the extra uh, vizier ability on top of there, being able to play creatures on from the top of your library. But if you have some sort of shenanigans, you can probably just go through a lot of your deck. Which is pretty sweet. Yeah, like yeah. Um, it is like having an eighth card in your hand, and I think Corsair, uh, it's revealed. So that's this is yeah. this, this yeah. is better in that regard. I mean, this is you know they're just they're very comparable cards, but um, yeah, you always want to be able to you don't want you don't want to be revealing that information if you can avoid it. Yeah, and I mean I think Coven's going to be a lot more incidental than than like a build around uh, kind of aspect in that like. Think of playing a turn one mana dork, playing this on turn two, and then playing something else, like something with a different power, like three plus power on on uh, turn three, and you've already enabled that coven ability. Um, so like, it's not always going to be on, but I think at its baseline, being like a coarser um, is pretty pretty relevant. It's a nice form of card advantage. It's nice to get those lands off the top sure is next up we have briar bridge tracker it's two and a green for a two three human scout with vigilance and when it enters the battlefield investigate so you get to create a colorless clue artifact token with pay two, sacrifice this artifact draw a card in case you didn't know what investigate is come on and as long as you control a token briar bridge tracker gets plus two plus zero so for three mana you're getting a four three with vigilance mm -hmm. that's very good Honestly, is it sad? Is it sad to say that like that's not even a very impressive rate in green at like a three drop? <laughs> you know, coming out of like Love Struck Beast standard. <laughs> yeah, and there's also that um, what's that card? G uh, Garrick's Harbinger isn't that thing like a four three for three? Yeah, four three with hexproof and a little bit of... basically draws you cards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hexproof from black. Yeah, hexproof from black. But um, yeah, whenever it connects, you look at whatever the power. Uh, from the top of your library and put a creature card or Garrick Planeswalker, if that's relevant, yeah. into it is. your hand. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's also, if you think back, uh, that Elf Knight from, I think it was from Dominaria. It was green, five, four. green, 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 5-4, and it had that daunt oh, ability. Yeah, Steel like, Leaf Champion. That was part of a cycle. Yeah, yeah super good card. Yeah, very good. But at the very least, like in a roundabout way, Briarbridge Tracker replaces itself, yeah. right? Giving you that clue. Yeah. 
And I think, like, obviously, like, this isn't exciting command or anything, but I think in the standard format, having a, a green three drop that's only one green pip at four three power mm -hmm. and vigilance is actually pretty dang good because you can still, like, easily splash this in other colors and not have to worry. Like, doing still leaf champion three green, you're like, you're playing green. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've been running this in my uh, my Toski Brawl deck because I had to make some, well, the game made cuts for me without telling me. Just like, these cards aren't legal anymore. <laughs> I'm like, fine. And I've been running this guy, and he's uh, he does a lot of work. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I like this card a lot. Yeah, it's a good, good mid, mid rangey creature. Burly Breaker is next. It's her first transform card today. Front side is three green green for a 6-5 human werewolf with ward one. And it is daybound. So if a player casts no spells during their own turn, it becomes night next turn. Then the other side is Dire Strain Demolisher. It's an 8-7 werewolf with ward 3, and of course, it has night bound. So if a player casts at least two spells during their own turn, it becomes day next turn. I mean, if you're in the market for a thick boy... It's very thick, like, yeah. It's a, it's a uh, keyword big. <laughs> and this is a very like scary boy in um, Limited because it's at the uncommon status so it definitely pops up a lot more than other threats and like it's one of the biggest creatures in the set yeah so it's scary it's fine and limited i feel like like limited honestly there's so much werewolf hate in limited that like werewolves are not that scary like you've got like man i've drafted werewolves twice and like gone all the way <laughs> oh that's <laughs> then you've done better than most <laughs> yeah i wonder i bet there's gonna be a lot of vampire hate in the in the companion set to this Next up is Death Bonnet Sprout. It's another transform card. The front side is, of course, Death Bonnet Sprout. It costs one green for a 1-1. One, one. Fungus. At the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. Then if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, transform Death Bonnet Sprout into Death Bonnet Hulk. It's a 3-3 three, three Fungus Horror. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile a card from a graveyard. If a creature card was exiled this way, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Death Bonnet Hulk. You're just hulking out of the, the... They should have him, like, hulking out of a t-shirt or something. Yeah, yeah. You should have a yeah. little t-shirt on on the front. It's like purple purple shorts. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting huge. <laughs> That's what Hulk says. Oh, I'm getting huge. <laughs> <laughs> this card is really cool like i i just i've had really good play experiences with this card it's a pretty relevant threat at most parts of the game um i mean a parody like it's good at gumming up the board at the very least um but just like on turn one just to play something that will incidentally mill you if if you can build your deck to care about having stuff in your graveyard then this is going to be a nice little bonus um and then of course like just turning it into a hulk and then having that incidental graveyard hate because like notably it can exile a card from a graveyard so it's it's nice to just pick off like those flashback spells or whatever you know shenanigans your opponent has going on they grow up so fast <laughs> I, I like the sprouts little fingers <laughs> me too i was just looking at yeah. those they're so cute he's like wearing little gloves <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Then they turn into these like dangly long claws. Yeah, it's, no, it looks, I don't like those. It looks the arms look like <laughs> the, the guy for the art from like mutagenic growth from uh, New Phyrexia. Yeah, yeah. That reminds me of that. Dryad's Revival is next. It's two and a green for a sorcery. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand, and it has a flashback for four and a green. I like what they're doing with like this kind of regrowth effect. Like we've saw this in um, what was the is Balagid Recovery? Yeah, from Zendikar the, Rising. The, yeah, the MDFC. So you, you could play it for three mana regrowth, which is like fine. But the fact that it comes in as a tap land, like I think that's where the strength is. Exactly. And I, I think similarly to Dryad's Revival, it's like you're probably not totally excited about the three mana regrowth. But the fact that you could like incidentally mill this or like discard it and then have uh, some use for it later from your graveyard, I think that's where its strength is. Yep. And then even in Commander, like, if you have it in your starting hand, like, getting to cast this twice, like, I don't think it'll be the worst thing yeah. if your deck is kind of built around that kind of thing as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I do also want to look into the story because I really do like the flavor text here where it says, pleased to meet you seven. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is all about Ren and, like, the things he grafts with or something. I don't she. know. She. Yeah. Okay, Eccentric Farmer is next. 
art on this card creeps me out. It's two and a green for a <laughs> two-three human peasant. And when Eccentric Farmer enters the battlefield, mill three cards. Then you may return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. I just don't like bugs. I think that's what it is. <laughs> I love, Especially I when love they're the so big. Uh, careful now. Don't want to get the seeds stuck to your feelers like last time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The seeds <laughs> are in my feelers. <laughs> <laughs> I... Um, I'm a big fan of uh, what's the the Seder Seder Wayfinder? Uh, is yes, that, is that the one? Yeah, yeah. This got like some Seder Wayfinder vibes. Um, the night the nice thing is that it it picks up lands from your graveyard that were already there, so you don't necessarily have to hit the hit the four off the top. In this case, it's milling three, and you just get any land uh, from your graveyard to your hand. So I don't know. I like it. In a self mill lands graveyard strategy, like yeah. it might be, yeah, might be worth considering. Yeah, a little bit like uh, also like grapple with the past too from, uh, yeah, oh, uh, another yeah. Innistrad set. I can't remember. Like this is definitely a pretty strong card. Like I've even seen like Seder Wayfinder be played in modern, mm -hmm. but I think Eccentric Farmer being three mana might be too much because Seder's only two. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think the three mana is kind of what makes it tough, but. Um... I don't know in commander like for, for other things yeah. yeah like i could i could see it in, in like uh like a dedicated kind of self mill graveyard deck for commander outland liberator is next it's a transform card front side is one in a green for a 2-2 human werewolf you can pay one and sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment and it has day bound and the flip side is frenzied trap breaker it's a 3-3 werewolf with pay one, sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. And when it attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. And of course it has night bound. Um, and that ability to, um, that attack trigger where you get to blow up an artifact or enchantment, that is mm -hmm. also on... Um, uh, Gogla. Exactly. And that ape is fantastic that thing does work mm. i'm so sorry to i was so sorry <laughs> to see it leave standard but i'm still using it in historic brawl and it's as good as ever yeah that thing's a house yeah and i mean it it would be perfect like i have this list in my scryfall account that i've just like been thinking about for the longest time it's a naturalized tribal deck <laughs> <laughs> that's right so, you've spoken of this so it's before. like <laughs> it's like liquid metal coating plus naturalize effects and this like fits perfectly into that kind of <laughs> shell of a deck well and now you and also have liquid metal torque to slot in there yeah, yeah exactly yeah um but yeah kogla at the helm uh outland liberator is a perfect addition to that yeah this card's also really cool because obviously you're gonna relate it to rex age mm-hmm and in a way, this costs the same as Rex Age. It's just like you can't like yeah. do blink shenanigans with mm -hmm. it. But it being still like the same cost as that can be like for some deck something else. Because mm -hmm. I mean, like if for some reason this does transform, the flip side has the attack trigger as well. So yep. it's cool. Yeah, and I think in Commander specifically, it's it's tough to put too much emphasis on the transform side because I think most people are going to be <laughs> casting spells, and if if they aren't, they're going to have a bad day. Um, but uh, like, if you think about it, like, Thrashing Brontodon, it's like a three mana, three, four, with the same kind of ability on its front side. Mm -hmm. um, that sees play. Yep, it does. Right? So, th these effects are just strong. Like, if you can staple it onto a creature, it's just going to be a good good time. Good time had by all. Next up, we have Primal Adversary. It's two and a green for a four, three wolf. It has Trample, and when it enters the battlefield, you may pay one and a green any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on Primal Adversary. Then up to that many target lands you control become 3-3 three -three wolf creatures with haste that are still lands. Oh, just like... <laughs> this reminds me of the um, Nissa lands. Yeah, the, the Planeswalker <laughs> from World of Spark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's like for for five or then even seven mana, you're getting like, like the primal adversary gets stronger, and then you're getting extra three threes as well. Like, this is a pretty dang good creature that really scales well when you pay more mana into it. Yeah, like the yeah. like the the yeah. This is the last card in the this this cycle of uh. Mm -hmm. and, uh yeah, no, they they are, they all scale well with the game. 
It's the, the only sad thing is that if you tap out and turn your lands into creatures, they're, <laughs> they're tapped down. <laughs> yeah, even though they have haste. Even though they have haste, yeah. <laughs> they're still tapped down. Yeah. Rise of the Ants is next. It's four double green for a sorcery. Create two, three, three green insect creature tokens. You gain two life, and it has flashback for six double greens. Kind of reminds me of uh, Crush of Worms from... Uh, God, what set was that? Might have been Judgment. You guys remember that card? You make like two four four ones. No, you think you make like? Let me look it up. Uh, you make? I think there's six sixes. Oh. oh yeah, is that the one that like costs more on the front side than the flashback side? Yeah. So yeah. It's six triple green for a sorcery. No. Put six. Put three six six green worm creature tokens into play, and the flashback is yeah. nine triple green. Oh, okay. No, yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of the one that makes like. I think it's like one six six worm, and uh, the flashback is like three in a green. Okay. And the front front face is like, I think it's like six in a green or something like that. Nice. I don't know. Nice. Anyways, what do you guys think of this one? Ants. Yeah. <laughs> Here come the ants. Insect tribal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do that. I mean, if you care about flashback, if you care about having like something to gum up the board. Um. Yeah, you could probably look at this, but as far as commander goes, like I think it's going to be outclassed pretty quickly at six mana. Yeah, I think so too. If you doubling those tokens, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> uh, okay, Sarith the Viper's Fang is next. It's two green green for a three four legendary human warlock. Other tapped creatures you control have Death Touch, and other untapped creatures you control have Hexproof. And you can pay one and tap it to untap another target creature or land you control. I, uh, that's the part of the card that m- most interests me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just. Yeah, I feel like going swinging or something, you can always just like give one of your creatures Hexproof again. Or, or give, give one of your creatures like a Viridian Longbow. Yeah. Start. Start pinging down creatures <laughs> or or like <laughs> untap your nykthos oh yeah because it's land yeah. as well right yeah that's pretty cool yeah oh yeah yeah there's probably some shenanigans you can get up to and i mean there's a ton of green creatures that just like incidentally have tapping abilities like mana abilities or and and otherwise like at, at the very worst like you take your lanoir elves like on turn seven when it's like the least relevant it is and you block and in response uh tap it down for mana and it gets death touch right Mm -hmm. yeah or you could untap you could um tap and untap your uh karametra's acolyte another another all that i don't know i got devotion on the brain but um anyways yeah so it's probably an infinite combo in there somewhere oh yeah probably (laughs) (laughs) Uh, next up, we have Tapping at the Window. It's one and a green for a sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. And it has flashback for two and a green. I kind of just want to build a deck that's like has all the two mana, you know, mill three cards <laughs> and and like give you some sort of selection. Like you mentioned Grapple with the Past and that's kind of like, you know, Grapple with the Past dot deck. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, that would. I mean, you'd be it'd be a lot of game actions. I and you know I love my game actions. I do. <laughs> also, I also really like the art on this card with like the uh, branches like scratching at the window. Yeah, it's um, you know when it comes to Innistrad sets, it it is creepy like all the other uh, all the other Innistrad sets. So they've 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 done that yeah. very well with the with the art and the the names on the cards. So home run there, home run hit it out of the park it's a baseball um reference guys just in case you didn't know <laughs> what <laughs> okay next up we have tovalar's hunt master it's it's a baseball the, the front side is four green green for a six six human werewolf and when it enters the battlefield create two 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 green wolf creature tokens and it has day bound the back side is Tovalar's pack leader. It's a 7 7 werewolf, and whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, create two 2 2 green 
wolf creature tokens and then you can pay two and two green another target wolf or werewolf you control fights target creature you don't control and it has night bound it's kind of like um master of the wild hunt is that what it's called that creates wolves and gets the wolves to fight well yeah I, like honestly i i'm reading this backside now and i honestly did not know that it had this activated ability <laughs> Really? I did yeah. not know. Like, wh- why? Why does it need that? <laughs> well, it's because have some werewolves utility. need power. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah, well, like you're you're already, you already got like a seven seven grave titan. Like, why do you need <laughs> like this <laughs> random activated ability? <laughs> I mean, you need it to be nighttime. I know. It's just like this. This card is a house. This card is a house. It's pretty good. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah. No, it's. I do like solid. it. You know that? Yeah, I, li- I like a werewolf like Grave Titan. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a, a thick boy, that's for sure. the The art um on the backside throws me off a little bit because like <laughs> perspective has like his upper body like it's big like yeah it's super big and his legs are really small so it kind of makes him look like a like a weird lopsided chungus. It looks you know a little I mean? silly. Yeah. <laughs> It's definitely, definitely a wide Why angle lens. Why couldn't they do there. the same aspect that they used on the front side? Because the know, front side looks cool. cool. And then the yeah, back side the ba- is like, hey, like... boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to make them look menacing. <laughs> well, they did yeah. not do that. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm going to activate my ability. <laughs> <laughs> Fight, boys. Don't forget to use your nails. <laughs> run home. Baseball. Home run. <laughs> Okay, next up we have Turn the Earth. It's one green for an instant. Choose up to three target cards in graveyards. The owners of those cards shuffle them into their libraries. You gain two life. And then, of course, it has flashback for one and a green. Some good, like, reshuffle shenanigans. Especially because it's flashback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes me think of... uh, Has a little bit of Yisan applications. I run um, uh, that, that, that three mana creature that shuffles um any number of cards from your graveyard into yeah, your like library loam dryad or whatever it is loaming shaman loaming shaman ah uh, yes but this is um <clears throat> it's an instant i love that and it's some incidental graveyard hate in the sense that like it's choose up to three target cards in graveyards so it don't, you don't have to target a single graveyard if somebody's gonna go like reanimate a big dummy like a tovlar's hunt master yeah uh, and you're like, nah, I'm good. Uh, just flash this back. Like, I don't know. You're playing like an incidental mill deck. You've like milled this over during the game, and you're just like, no, for two mana, I'm I'm gonna shuffle that into your library, and then shuffle back these key tutor cards into my library, and just you know, yeah, gravy for sure. Yeah, and um, you know, it's a really good point because you know I I always like to consider when I'm building a green deck putting um crows and grip into the deck you know it's a great removal spell it has split second um but it just destroys the the target of the spell one of my favorite naturalize effects is unravel the aether and there's another card that does basically the same thing um, yeah declamor exactly thank you um and you know in a lot of cases it's actually worse to be shuffling the the artifact or enchantment or, or whatever it is into the the owner's library because it can mm-hmm. you know can be harder to get like Basically repeating what Riley just said, so we can move on. Two, (laughs) unnatural growth. It's one quadruple green, or green, 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 for an enchantment. At the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn. Speaking of big chungus. Hell yeah. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that is a big wolf. It's like the size of a house. He's literally the the size of a house, yeah literally yeah Yeah. the sweet thing is at the beginning of each combat so so this is like happening on yeah it's defensive too happening in your opponents yeah yeah i I mean if you like thick boys this is a way to make your boys even thicker just an fyi usually if you're in green (laughs) if you're running a bottle green deck this is like just put it in yeah i've been like eyeing up my uh uh multani voltron deck and i was thinking i'm like Ooh, if I ever had to get over the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Multani is just like a 15-15. You're like, yep, yeah, it's a 30-30. Yeah. <laughs> Good game. 
Okay, Ren and Seven is our last green card today. It's three green green for a legendary Planeswalker, Ren. It has five loyalty and four abilities. Love a Planeswalker with four abilities. So the plus one is reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Zero is put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Minus three is create a green tree folk creature token with reach and this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. And minus eight, return all permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. You get an emblem with, you have no maximum hand size. Yeah, I'm running a, um, a Sultai ramp deck in standard. That deck is a lot of fun. It's got like a Seeker's Chariot, Ren and Seven, a bunch of two mana mana dorks, and uh, well, obviously like all runs Epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like make some big dorks, uh, take some extra turns, uh, use like Storm the Festival to get some big dorks and like um, removal spells in like uh, what is it? That saga, that Golgari saga from Kaldheim. That oh, that like destroys and ramps you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It destroys an online permanent, then gets a forest, then gives your creatures death touch. Yeah. Oh, I'm blanking on the name. Me too. Me something, too. Something, something old gods. Yeah, I've been uh, this. I, I've been playing a uh, Tatiova uh, Simic lands deck in Historic Brawl, and this thing's fantastic in that deck. Oh yeah. So Oof. it's just great. It's Oof. it's mostly the first two abilities that I use, but um yeah. you know the yeah. I it's just what I love about this planeswalker is it's not like it's it's of course it's very powerful, but it doesn't feel unfair. Like it protects it's itself. No Oko. Yeah, it protects itself. <laughs> the zero ability, you have to have lands in your hand to, you know, get anything out of it, obviously, and you want to have at least a couple. Yeah. Um and the plus one, you know, you need um a density of lands or you need to you need to want to have those cards in the graveyard or ideally both yeah it just it just feels very green mm -hmm. at its core and and all of the abilities work well with each other mm -hmm. um yeah it's just a very cool very cool planeswalker yeah not not broken really strong not broken <laughs> yeah really well designed it was a uh, binding of the old oh, guys that's the one thank you yeah okay Moving Please. on to gold. Our first gold card is a Planeswalker, a transformed Planeswalker. So it must be Arlen, the Pax Hope. She's two red-green for a four-loyalty legendary Planeswalker Arlen. She has Daybound. So the front side, uh, her plus one ability is until your next turn, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash, and each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. And her minus three is create... Two 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 green wolf creature tokens. Flip side is Arlen, the Moon's Fury. Four loyalty, Planeswalker, has Nightbound. Plus two is add a red and a green mana to your mana pool. And the zero ability is until end of turn, Arlen, the Moon's, Moon's Fury, becomes a 5 5 werewolf creature with trample, indestructible, and haste. <laughs> she's hiss she's hissing yeah i, I don't think that's no, what a wolf like, does rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> <laughs> they made her lower body little too look at that her little legs yeah. it's yeah. it's not as bad though. no it's not as bad it's it's not as like comically bad no she's still <laughs> she's still a little menacing yeah She's got a little snarl going on. <laughs> um, Stephanie, uh, this is a really good Arlen, though. Yeah, she is very good. She's yeah a, a very good threat. Either side. Turn turn four, just getting smacked with a 5-5 five, five trample indestructible. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. She's a house if you're already in a nightbound. And, uh, and she, she sets up the nightbound side pretty well with her plus one ability on the, on the front side. You know, giving you the ability to pass the turn and then flash things in as you need. Um, yeah, so just another cool Planeswalker. Uh, I don't know if I would play this in Commander. Would you guys play it in Commander? No. No. No, I think, like, Constructed is Definitely. where she shines. Yeah, they can all be... They can all Unless be you're, commander. like... Yeah, I mean, like, because, like, if you are playing, like, Tovalar with your, as your Commander, like... Paying four mana for two 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 wolves oh, yeah. isn't like the worst thing, and then she still sticks around, and you can do other shenanigans. So like, I mean, 
if you're doing the werewolf deck, I think she still fits in there quite well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I just mean, I, I guess I was thinking more in general, just like as a as a standalone, if she would be strong enough to to like protect herself. But that minus three is kind of tough. Yeah. Right. Like even though she's making two bodies, I, I don't think you could <laughs> yeah. necessarily survive a, a full turn cycle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, and planeswalkers are far more fragile in commander in general. Yeah. Because every, everybody comes they at do. you. And I didn't do like, anything ooh, wrong. It's like I just wanna, I just wanna, <laughs> I just wanna play. All I did was play a planeswalker. <laughs> That's why you can so good. You can just play him. Usually activate him, <laughs> wipe, wipe the, the board. board, and then everyone's <laughs> coming at you on the next turn. Yeah, and you're like, come on, guys, I've got <laughs> With a an live empty board in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next up, we have blade stitched scab. It's a blue and black for a two three zombie soldier. Other zombies you can control get plus one plus O. Oh. Couldn't have given us plus yeah. one plus one. Zombies. Plus. Nope. It's too too powerful. Be too <laughs> I mean, zombie lord. You need a zombie lord. Uh-huh. Uh This is a zombie lord for sure. Yeah, this will probably get slotted into quite a few um, demir zombie decks in commander. Got a board full of I zombies. Know I would. That one extra power is gonna gonna get you there. Can't Stay Away is next. It's a white and a black for a sorcery. Return target creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains, if this creature would die, exile it instead. And it has flashback for 3 white and black. The one thing I really like about this is, like, if you bring the creature back, it's only if it would die. Mm-hmm. So if you blink it, it's just itself again. Yeah, it's a again. different permanent yeah. at that point. Yeah, yeah, that's a roundabout way of <laughs> getting some extra value. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, bringing bringing stuff back with a flashback is like really good as well. Like this is a sweet card. Yeah, I, yeah. I like it. And it's one of the things that White does best is bringing back low mana value creatures. So yeah, it it's kind of got like those those unearth vibes. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that too. Mixed with like unburial rites. Uh huh. Um, I think I think you probably want to be caring a little bit more about like enter the battlefield effects more than die effects uh-huh. because yeah. uh, it is a replacement effect. So the second time around, like I mean, you're probably getting some value from it anyway, but you wouldn't get a die trigger from this thing dying. Well, no, but it doesn't matter because yeah. you blinked it, and if it dies, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> All right, sorry, I forgot we were still in magical Christmas land. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> well we're obviously running ephemerate along yeah. with it so <laughs> and we're like all in on this less than three mana creature <laughs> <laughs> yeah this and this might be i the, the art is really fantastic in this set but this might be my favorite it's just the kitties this one's really yeah, good like bring it, yeah. bring it yeah, back the kitties and, are like oh shit bring it back a ghost kitty it's like bring the ghost kitty back <laughs> the ghost, i like how all the all the cats are like whoa the, there's a ghost kitty here and that one cat's like yeah i don't fucking care I'm yeah. going for it <laughs> going for it guys yeah, the ghost kitty has unfinished business and then there's like the one with the big mane in the middle who's just like i don't care <laughs> <He's just> like... <laughs> yeah that's like the 18 year old cat that's like on its way out probably yeah He's like, i'm gonna be a ghost cat yeah. soon <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Denik Pious Apprentice. It's a white and a blue for a 2-3 legendary human soldier. And the front side reads uh, lifelink. Cards in graveyards can't be the targets of spells or abilities. And it has disturb for 2 white blue. And the flip side is uh, this is our first disturb card this episode. So um, with disturb you may cast this card from your graveyard transformed for its disturb cost. And... The flip side is Denik Pious Apprentice. Uh, it's a 3-2 legendary spirit soldier. It has flying, and whenever one or more creature cards are put into graveyards from anywhere, investigate. This ability triggers only once each turn. And if, of course, like all disturb cards, if this would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. But again, if you bounce it to your hand, you can cast it for the front side. <laughs> <laughs> if you blink it, it comes back in on the front side. That's right. Thank you, Riley. And then you can see now it you're getting it. Again. <laughs> <laughs> all the value. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, it's a cool card. Like, honestly, like if I didn't already have an investigate, uh, like clues matter, tokens matter kind of deck, I'd I'd consider building around Denik. It seems pretty fun. Um, I'm, 
you know, as as safe as the uh, disability triggers only once each turn clause is, I don't know if I'm really a fan of it. Like for Commander, it's just like I want more. Yeah. I just want it all. Yeah, you know, because <laughs> like, what is the point of having it? You know, into all graveyards from anywhere. Yeah. What is the point of having that much um, kind of ability to get the the triggers, and then it only happens once? It's kind of, I don't yeah. know. It kind of feels like a just a downer. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's like if you wrath, you're still only getting one. So it's mm-hmm. like if you have the ability to pick off creatures. You should dang well <laughs> be able to get a clue yeah. for each one. Yeah. You earn that. You just have to like, you know, do it once a turn, on other people's turns. Just you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now who's living in magical Christmas land? <laughs> 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 okay. <That was> <laughs> Next up, we have Dire Strain Rampage. It's one red green for a sorcery. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. If a land was destroyed this way, its controller may search their library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Otherwise, its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. And it has flashback for three green, red. I guess this is a cycle too, the cycle of like flashbacks and then like making them cost, like throwing a three in front of it. Is it? I don't know. I feel like I'm seeing a cycle uh... here. Like multicolor flashback is is a cycle, but I don't know if the costs are necessarily the key piece of the. Cycle. Yeah, but there's definitely like, but there's definitely the flashback with the colors. I guess like croaking counterpart is the exact same mana cost. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah, you might be onto something. Yeah. Might be onto something. Um. So, are you casting this on yourself? Yeah. I. You can. I'm. Totally. I'm thinking, this is a three mana ramp spell, most of the time. And then on the on the occasions which you draw it later, uh, or if you really need to take care of a problem, artifact or enchantment, that's when you're using it on somebody's artifact or enchantment. Yeah. But I think for the most part, like hitting one of their lands is not great. Like you're <laughs> you're ramping them, but hitting one of your lands is good because you're basically yeah. getting like a harrow effect. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think look at it first as like a harrow effect. And then just as like a secondary ability of being able to, you know, um, assassin's trophy something. Man, I wish Harrow had flashback. They should reprint it, like do a functional reprint, but give it flashback. Yeah, instant speed, lands come in on tap. That would be great. Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) (laughs) Next up, we have Diagraph Rebirth. It's three black green for a sorcery. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature that died this turn. And you get to return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And, of course, it has flashback for five black green. Well, the mana costs aren't the same. No, no, but this well, is, this also uncommon. isn't a rare. <laughs> yeah, it's an uncommon. <laughs> oh, it is uncommon. Come on, yes, Eric, yes. Come on. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, cool card. It's kind of like Unburial Rites, except Golgari. Um, I've definitely used this to like send a bunch of... Uh, decayed zombies and like trade off with a bunch of creatures uh like lose my old stick fingers in battle and then bring it back for two mana and have like a seven seven old stick fingers on the battlefield and that felt pretty fun that was unlimited (laughs) and yes there's a card called old stick fingers (laughs) (laughs) no i've I've seen it yeah Uh, next up is why is it here on the list <laughs> yeah i know it's too late now <laughs> uh-oh <laughs> faithful mending is next it's a white and a blue for an instant you gain two life draw two cards then discard two cards and you can flash it back for one a white and a blue i think during spoiler season this was one of the cards that i was most excited about um you know just because yep. it's a call back to faithless looting and well, they banned Faithless Looting, so they're like, well, we still need it in format yeah, somehow. Exactly. So here yeah. you go. Give it to Control yeah. instead. Yeah, make it cost, make it cost I, more I don't more think mana. it's a good Control card, though. It's like card disadvantage. I mean, it's card well, disadvantage on the front, and then it's card neutral. On the front. But it, overall, yeah, on, card on disadvantage. On the second part. <laughs> good for, like... But you're still gaining two life as well, so I, I think it can still work in Control because of the life gain as well. It just really yeah. prolongs things. And if you have all those lands in hand... Yeah, instant speed helps. Um, 
but I think there's been some like modern Jeskai Phoenix decks using it. So that oh that's yeah, been pretty cool. Um, there you go. But yeah, I I love faithless looting. It feels good all yeah. the time. Yeah. Even though I'm down a card, well, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're <laughs> it's, it's a deck. Yeah. Don't don't There's stop. The reason why it's banned. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> faithless looting I think is still a stronger card, just because it's, well, it's one it's one man on sense. the front side. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Definitely. Next up, we have Florian Voldaren Scion. It's one black red for a 3 3 legendary vampire noble. It has first strike, and at the beginning of your post combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the total amount of life your opponents lost this turn. Exile one of those cards and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn. Like, if you even have just like a pinger, like one of those ones where you tap, each opponent takes one damage. You even can't get damage through. You're still looking at the top three cards, and if you like need a land or something, like that's an extra card that you just get to play. I mean, even if you're just like triggering an extort, like at the at the minimum there, you're like looking at three, getting one. That that seems pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it's a lot of card advantage, just like um, Paco. A lot of card advantage. Just this <laughs> this is not as strong as Paco. No. <laughs> so maybe, if they, maybe if they gave it haste. Yes, I'm sure if they gave it haste and then also let you cast everybody's spells. <laughs> well, you still have to pay for them. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say without paying their mana cost. <sighs> Galvanic Iteration is next. It's a blue and a red for an instant. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell you may choose new targets for the copy. And it has flashback for one blue red. It's pretty good. Aha! Yeah. Not, not the same mana cost. No. <laughs> but no. the colors matter. But uh, yeah, this is this is great because there's a lot of cards where uh, the copy spells that are two mana, but this one also has flashback. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah and nice. you're obviously in the colors that you're going to be doing that kind of stuff in. On its face, like... Most of the cards that, that have this ability, where it's like, you know, the next one you cast, you copy it, it's like, not too exciting. But the flashback definitely does it for me. Like, I'd, I'd sooner pitch this to a Faithless Looting and then have that ability out of my graveyard later. Yeah. I think that's where the strength of this card is. Uh -huh. Ghoul Caller's Harvest is next. It's, black, it's a black and a green for a sorcery. Create X22 black zombie creature tokens with Decayed where X is half the number of creature cards in your graveyard, round it up. And it has flashback for three black green. You can make a lot of zombies for two mana. Yeah, I like I like zombies. I like rounding things up. Um... <laughs> yeah, they make us do that a lot, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Katilda... Dawnheart Prime is next. It's a green and a white for a 1-1 legendary human warlock. It has protection from werewolves. And human creatures you control have tap, add one mana of any of this creature's colors to your mana pool. And then she has an activated ability, which is four green-white. Tap, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. I know this is like this matters the werewolf thing matters because like we're in a set with a lot of werewolves but kind of reminds me of that uh simic legend from commander legends that has like protection from salamanders was that what it was yeah 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 and i was like <laughs> all right well i guess i'll build a deck around him don't don't get near me salamander because <laughs> like in the greater you know like if you wanted to build a commander deck around this creature like i don't probably probably the werewolf thing isn't c gonna come up that often you just care about the other no. two parts of the card which are pretty good yeah it, exactly yeah yeah no oh, yeah giving all your humans a mana dork like yeah yeah and humans are good at going wide like if you're making a bunch of tokens all, make, giving all your tokens the ability to tap for mana that's pretty big um mm -hmm. but never mind the fact that they can tap for mana and then get big yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and green has a lot of ways to untap, and like you could, you know, I'm again going into magical Christmas land here, but like it's not that hard to get like unlimited um, mana, and with with what you got going on here on here and in, and in these colors, and throw some artifacts in, and like boom, roasted. Yeah. Concordant crossroads. Throw it. Yeah. Start pumping out dorks. Just pump them. 
pump them. Throw a Gavney yeah. Township I'm, in exactly. there. I'm just going to concede because like, this is going to take too long. <laughs> too many game actions. Yeah, yeah let's, let's <laughs> shuffle, shuffle up and play again. Next up is Lisa Forgotten Archangel. Yeah, it's like Lisa, right? Lisa Forgotten Archangel, it's two white, white, black for a 4-5 legendary angel. It has flying and lifelink, and whenever another non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. And if a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. I've seen this popping up a lot as a commander in both um, Brawl and Historic Brawl, but a lot more in, in like Standard Brawl, but it's... um. Uh, so far, not very impressed by it uh, from from an opponent's perspective. It's a strong card itself. Like this is a bit of a big threat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Flying lifelink four or five gives you some incidental like value from your things dying and like hates on your opponent's stuff dying, so you can shut down sacrifice synergies. Uh, yep. Yep. So, I mean, good card. Yep. I don't know if I'd build around it, but yeah. Is she an evil angel or is she good? You know, I is she don't like, know. Is she like Sigarda? And where are those other two angels? Like the, uh, do you, I don't know the story from like the 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 Innistrad set with Emrakul. Um, yeah, the, I know. Like, um, Rosella, uh, what happened to her? Is she evil? I, oh, mean, I think they got destroyed. They got destroyed. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because they were pretty fucked. Like they were. <laughs> yeah, they they were far into yeah, the Eldrazi. Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course Avacyn got unmade. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I was just reading about that the other day. Uh, okay, we do have old stick fingers in here. It's next. It's, there you go. It's X black <laughs> green for a legendary horror. Uh, its power toughness is star star. And whenever you cast this spell, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards. Put all creature cards revealed this way into your graveyard, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Old stick fingers power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard i don't think you're particularly interested in this card for the power toughness clause because there's a there's a few other commanders that have the same kind of abilities and they're arguably like stronger in in their own right but old stick fingers i think this would be a cool uh commander to have at the helm of like a dredge deck uh -huh. where you've got like a density of dredge creatures that you can just like put x equals one or two and like somewhat reliably get a dredger into the graveyard and just like start your game plan going um so that that could be fun i think that would be cool and plus you know he reminds me of salad fingers yeah yeah <laughs> anything that has antlers and like isn't supposed to anatomically have them is like forever scary yeah well he's wearing skulls <laughs> oh is that what it is yeah okay yeah that's... but i mean that's arguably scary too that's, he's just no, like yeah he, he feels like this is part of his aesthetic is that yeah. he just gets to wear these full skulls on his head <laughs> <laughs> his his power toughness ability should be more like the lord of extinctions lord that would be cool extinction yeah <laughs> I all cards and all graveyards is its power yeah, and toughness that would be, yeah <laughs> yeah that would i feel be like better. He, he, you know, he would pair well with effects like greater good. Um, yeah. Like, I, yeah, I just yeah. see him more of, like, like a synergy kind of value. Like, not necessarily like a Voltron. Like, you don't want to, like, fill up your graveyard and, like, smack people in the face. I mean, it's a nice secondary ability to have that available to you. But, like, I think it's more of, like, this is a, a commander that would set you up uh, straight out of your command zone. Next up is Rem Carlos, stalwart sailor. Did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> something yeah something like that <laughs> no it's 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 Carlos? rem carolus stalwart slayer not sailors <laughs> yes that's right it's one red white for a two three legendary human knight it has flying and haste and if a spell would deal damage to you or another permanent you control prevent that damage and if a spell would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent and opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one instead. This picture, like the art is a little too like photorealistic for me. It just kind of throws me off. Also, what is he riding? It's like, has like a, a horse's like a body. And then no, a, not a hippogriff. Yeah. It's like a, like a, a griff. I think that's it. It's some kind of griff. We'll call him griff. Stalwart sailor. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's typing in Griff like there's that's what they oh, look okay. like. All right. Well. Yeah. Um, I like it. Seems like an efficient card. All your pings deal two damage. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just, uh, it it seems cool. I'm sure you can build something around it. I don't <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> I I definitely uh, I I haven't updated the deck yet, but this is gonna go into uh, Fire oh, Song. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it like if you are doing like a Blasphemous Act, you're not gonna get the Life Link from your creatures, but I'm sure you're fine with uh protecting your board and making it a little one sided. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Rite of Harmony is next. It's a green and a white for an instant. Whenever a creature or enchantment enters the battlefield under your control this turn, draw a card, and it has flashback for two green and a white. Uh, And I've already slotted this into my um, Enchantress Voltron deck, but I think, and I'm sure you guys would agree with me, you can probably get a lot more value from this card in a creature-heavy deck, especially like a token deck. This really reminds me of... um, that card that's banned in modern um is it glimpse of nature no is that what it is the, you know the one yeah, it's like one green yeah. you draw a card it's really good in edric you draw a card for each creature that enters like this turn yeah. you draw a card for for each creature that enters the battlefield under your control kind of thing yeah it is glimpse of nature yeah glimpse it's, of nature glimpse of nature says whenever you play, you play. Yeah. yeah so you yeah so you yeah it. have to cast it this you can you can hit tokens so yeah this card's yeah you fantastic. can you just make a bunch of tokens and draw cards which is yeah insane. and these are the, yeah. these are the token colors right but it's nice that they threw enchantment sure. on there too it's yeah. just gravy mm-hmm. i honestly yeah i i agree kevin i think it would be stronger in in more of a creature based deck just because i feel like enchantress just like wants um like a density of enchantments yeah. more than instance totally but, uh, totally but like I, at the end of the day, like if 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 this is one of the few instants that you're running, like it's a pretty solid instant to have, especially if you have a way to like pitch it or use it later on. Um, yeah, and there's when, always a dent- you know like if you replenish. Yeah, and there's always exactly there's and there's always a, at least in my deck there's because it's a Voltron d- deck there's a density of a lot of like one and two drop auras. So you know when you yeah. get to that point, you could be playing. Maybe like five in a turn plus this. Like, you know, you get to the mid yeah. game and you've ramped a little bit. Um, so this might just refill your hand. Yeah, just a really, just a super solid card. And like, even in standard, we have the Scoot Swarm. Oh, yeah, of course. So like, if you're starting to go off a of Scoot Swarm, you're just like, you're cast fine. this, play land, draw six <laughs> cards. I think you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> But think of all the cards you could draw. It's so satisfying to kill like the first Scoot Swarm before they have a chance to do anything. And it really sucks when you don't get to do that. Blood on the Snow is good for the Scoot Swarm thing. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Or just playing good decks. Oh, yeah. Got him. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so Rite of Oblivion is next. It's a white and a black for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice a non-land permanent. And then you get to exile target non-land permanent. And it has flashback for two, a white and a black. Revenge is a circle without end. That's true. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I enjoy this card. Yeah, yeah, I it's like great. It. You, you're gonna play this in a deck that cares about sacrificing its stuff for value, and this is a pretty solid way to get some value. Yeah, this is pretty top tier removal. Yeah, it's a sorcery, so that that's a little bit of a downer. But like honestly, non land permanent, I think that makes up for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It should just be permanent, you know. Just yeah, it should be another vindicate. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just so oh you boy. can like, just hate on one person at the table. Yeah. Well, they probably <laughs> deserve it. Uh, Riley, who's they were probably taking too many game actions. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like on my turn. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I'll be you like, just yeah, wait. no, it's fine. I'll take a few more game actions over here. <laughs> <laughs> Root Coil Creeper is next. It's a green and a blue for a 2-2 plant horror. You can tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Tap it to add two mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast spells from your graveyard. And you can pay a green and a blue to tap it, exile it, and return target card with flashback you own from exile to your hand. 
there's a ton of two mana um, mana dorks out there and I feel like it, it takes quite a bit uh, for them to become interesting enough to slot into a deck <laughs> and root coil creeper definitely is is a fantastic mana dork if if you care at all about using its second and well not even its third ability but its second ability for sure like mm -hmm. it doesn't care specifically about flashback but if you're casting things from your graveyard it's really strong slow gurk the over slime is next it's one green blue for a three three legendary ooze with trample and whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, put a 1-1 counter on it. Slow Gurk. It's, it kind of sounds like a like an off-brand of yogurt or something. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's like it comes in, in weird, like, pouches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you have to cut. Yeah. yeah. You just, you, you like, squeeze, you just squeeze out of it. Squeeze out of the corner. <laughs> you gurk it and There's out. always that one kid in class that just, like, gets it all over himself yeah it's like because he, he bites it it's because yeah. he bites it yeah it's like ah oh, tommy oh. and then oh, he got slow gurked again and his parents don't wash his yogurt covered <laughs> clothes so he just stinks yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so anyways slow gurk um you get to remove three one one counters from it to return it to its owner's hand and when it leaves the battlefield return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand yeah, great in the ninety nine two. It's a threat. Like if you're if you like Tatio Valands, I'm sure would love this. Mm hmm Yep. Um mm -hmm. you, you've got to be putting lands into your graveyard some way. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take I'm gonna slot I'm gonna take Uro out and I'm slotting this in. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I think this Uro, is a better card. Uro's Uro is so yesterday. I know. It's like, dude, get out of here. You're banned. <laughs> get out of here, Uro. I banned you myself. <laughs> yeah, no, but if if you care about graveyard, you know, self mill, um, pitching lands, whatever you whatever you can do to get this guy a little bit thick, like I think, obviously, like returning lands straight to the battlefield is pretty strong. But I feel like at some point when it comes to landfall decks, like you might even get to the point where you've just run out of gas, and you just need to hit more landfall triggers. And, and this is probably uh, a pretty solid threat in the early game and a pretty solid threat in the late game. Oh, that's that, and that does happen um, with uh, with landfall triggers. I can I can tell you from experience. Yeah, just good old Zurin Orb Slogurk. There you go. Teferi, who slows the sunset, is our last Planeswalker today. He's two white-blue for a four-loyalty legendary Teferi. His plus one ability is choose up to one target artifact up to one target creature and up to one target land untap the chosen permanence you control tap the chosen permanence you don't control and you gain two life his minus two is look at the top three cards of your library put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order and his minus seven is you get an emblem with untap all permanence you control during each other player's untap step and you draw a card during each other each opponent's draw step that's nice. That's like a it's like a better seedborn muse. Yeah. When are you ever hitting yeah. that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This 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 Teferi <laughs> is not that good. I'm just Maybe say that. okay. You could hit this if um. What's that <laughs> one? Uh no. Wait, never are mind. we talking that's, ephemerate that's here? Not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do an ephemerate thing, but it doesn't work. I just went over it in my head. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it just doesn't protect itself. It doesn't keep things tapped down. Um, it seems oddly aggressive in a way that, like, blue-white is not aggressive <laughs> traditionally. So I don't know. This this uh, Teferi seems a little bit confused as to what he wants to do. But if you want a four-mana um, anticipate, like, I guess that's what you'll get. In a way, he pays for himself. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because he... He costs he costs four. Then you untap your soul ring and you untap your land. Yes. <laughs> oh, and, and your and you probably and your have land a dork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I think I think it's an interesting way to to take Teferi. Uh, yes, I'm fine with. Them I don't know how a shitty Teferi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean he still has like combo potential even in standard, which is pretty cool. So. 
what what's the combo what's some, um you have to use there's the green creature that taps for mana for how much life that you've gained oh and then you have lithoform engine and then you actually can just like loop it because <laughs> you untap lithoform engine as well you just have infinite mana infinite health go do what you want <laughs> so a three card <laughs> combo consisting of like three four drops yeah, man. <laughs> that sounds so janky. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty sweet. <laughs> okay, we broke to fairy. <laughs> All right. Tovalar Dire Overlord is next. It's one red green for a 3 3 legendary human werewolf. The front side is whenever a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves and or werewolves, it becomes night. Then transform any number of human werewolves you control. And this has daybound. The flip side is Tovalar, the Midnight Scourge. This is also a, a not intimidating looking werewolf. It's a 4-4 four, four <laughs> legendary werewolf. And whenever a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. And then you can pay X, red, green, target, wolf, or werewolf. You control gets plus X plus O and gains trample until end of turn. And it has night bound. Um, and you can just do that activated ability as, as m- many times as you have the mana to do it. I mean, like, how many werewolves do you see hold a sword? Ah, oh, right. But why are his legs so little? Yeah, it's he's got the, <laughs> the, um, the hunt master's problem. I just want them to be a little more like anthropomorphized. They're too much. They're too wolf looking for me. I want more of a wolf man thing. Yeah, what about the um? Oh, what was that green card? Green enchantment, a natural growth. Like that was a cool wolf. Yeah. It's like hunched over. It's like grizzly. Looks fucking rad. Yeah. But then this guy's like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, how is the moon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Uh, it's nice that on the front side, it doesn't only turn it to night, but it also transforms any of them. Yeah. So that the older werewolves do still transform. Yeah, oh man, imagine imagine the outrage if <laughs> if it so only cared funny. about daybound, nightbound werewolves. That'd be funny. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Yeah. Next up, we have Vadric Astral Archmage. Is it Archmage or Archmage? I think it's, it's Archmage. Arch. I think it's Archmage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's one a blue and a red for a one-two legendary human wizard. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as Vadric, Astral Archmage, enters the battlefield. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost X less to cast, and whenever where where X is Vadric's power. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, put a 1-1 counter on Vadric. Now, this is cool. I like this. I like this guy. It's like a 3-mana Goblin Electromancer from the Command Zone. So... A little bit more reliable in that sense. <laughs> yes. But I'm sure, like, in Commander, I don't think werewolves from the set are going to be, well, werewolves in general, aren't going to be particularly strong because people are going to be casting their spells, right? Yeah. But Vadric, if you're playing at instant speed with a bunch of instants, on your turn, you just draw go, uh, you flip it to night, somebody else inevitably flips it back to day, and uh, you just like incrementally get a bigger and bigger discount on all your big big instants. So that could be a pretty interesting build around, an interesting way to take. Uh, is it? Because he certainly doesn't give a shit about werewolves. Nope. Thank God. <laughs> on these colors. He's also an astral mage, so I wish that like when he entered, it'd be the one card that it would like become night when he enters. That'd be cool. Yeah, but then we'd have to change the whole mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> vampire socialite is next it's black and red it's a black and a red for a 2-2 creature uh, vampire noble it has menace and when it enters the battlefield if an opponent lost life this turn put a 1-1 counter on each other vampire you control as long as an opponent lost life this turn each other vampire you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 counter on it you attack you deal some damage you blink it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah, i mean you could yes. it's not really the, the the colors for it but uh yeah 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 it's definitely an option i mean yeah yeah there. vampires you're running an edgar markov deck you want a vampire a two mana that's gonna be like a pseudo lord um good card mm-hmm. yeah moons so moving on to artifacts 
Moon Sliver Key is first. It's two mana for an artifact. You can pay one, tap, sacrifice it. Search your library for an artifact card with a mana ability or a basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. I didn't even know this card was in the set. Kind of like, um, uh, you know, like in off, uh, like in off green decks, I I always, you know, when I'm when I'm putting the deck together, a card that often makes it into the the pool of cards is Wayfarer's Bobble because it's it puts the the land onto the battlefield tapped. Um, for three mana, right? You pay one to cast it. You pay two to to tutor up yeah. a, a basic land. Um, but yeah. uh, you know, this just gets you like any mana rock that you want for for three mana. So uh, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. Go get your soul ring. Go get your mana crypt. Go get your basalt monolith for your combo. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know. Yep. Yeah, I think that's definitely where you'd want it. Is is like if you've got to assemble. A combo otherwise i just want like more of a density of mana rocks uh-huh. but this gets you a mana rock that's worth two mana what well because you can get a soul ring or a mana crypt or something which taps for two mana instead of yeah. just a mana rock for two that taps for one i know but you also have to like jump through hoops and like take a turn off to go find it <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying i'm saying like if off. you want a more consistent combo this is where you play it right that's when tutors are yeah. best yeah. yeah exactly yes I know. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> so next we are uh, moving on to lands. That was our only artifact, actually. So uh, we're moving on to our lands section. And uh, first up, we have the cycle of allied color paired lands. Um, and these are, are these called the slow lands? Yeah, I think that's where things kind of settled them. is, yeah, slow lands. So yeah. um, the Azorius one, uh, white blue, is deserted beach. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more other lands. So these are kind of the opposite of the, um, uh, like the Scars of Mirrodin, Kaladesh, uh, fast like lands. Fast lands. Yeah. yeah. As, the fast as lands. Known. Um, so I'm assuming we'll get the other half of these in Crimson Vow in November. Hopefully. Yeah. I'd hope so. Oh, yeah, for they've sure. They're pretty good about that. The like last do while, that. they they for the longest <laughs> time they weren't, but they've been you know they did it with like Zendikar and, and Kaldheim with the MDFCs. They did yeah. it in kind of a weird way because it wasn't five and five, but um, you know I I have I have yeah. faith. Not that I want to use these in any decks, but you know it's just nice to complete a cycle. Well, I was gonna say like because they've been doing a good job of it, they'll probably do it now. I was like, remember when Wizards used to not do that? Remember there's cycle of lands out there that still don't have their other. Well, cycle we just yet? mentioned a cycle of lands. <laughs> Scars of Mirrodin was like fucking 2011 or something and kaladesh was like 2000 and, yeah <laughs> it was it was they that was that was far apart we're like when are we gonna get the yeah. enemy cycle and it was often the enemy yeah. cycle that we didn't get because for the longest time yeah they focused on allied color pairs so. well because there's the battle for zendikar that we still don't have the other side to yeah that's right and then the amonkhet lands also allied yeah uh, the bicycle lands yes yep yeah. um Etc. cetera. Um, but what do you guys think? Um, are these lands seeing play anywhere right now? Standard. Uh, yeah. These lands are fantastic. Okay. Um, I think these are awesome for commander just okay. in, in the sense that like, um, like fast lands are, are, are fine. But of course, like as the, the game goes on, <laughs> Yeah, I think you want to draw a tap land less and less as yeah. the game goes on. I, I think the fast lands are good in like CEDH. In regular commander, yeah. I yeah. would not run them. But I think I think these hit a sweet spot. Like turn three, having a land come in untapped, uh, like a dual land come in untapped, like that's that's really relevant. So I I'm super excited for these lands. Alrighty, well get them while they're cheap, everybody. Okay, next up we have hostile hostile. It's uh, a land, of course. Taps for generic mana. And you can pay one, tap it, sacrifice your creature, put a soul counter on it. Then if there are three or more soul counters on it, remove those counters, transform it, then untap it. Activate only as a sorcery. And the flip side is creeping in. It's an artifact, creature, horror construct, 3-7. And whenever creeping in attacks, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of creature cards exiled with creeping in. And you can also pay four. Creeping in phases out. This card. A lot of stuff going on with this card. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's very good. 
I love having incidental sacrifice abilities on my lands. Um, notably, this is at sorcery speed, so it's it's not going to be as good in all situations where you care about sacrificing your things. Like, namely, if somebody goes to like Swords to Plowshare as a key creature, and you really don't want it to be exiled, um, yeah, and you go to exile or you go to sacrifice it. Like, this is not going to be where you want it. But I think in a deck like an Aristocrats deck where you just want an abundance of sacrifice outlets like this is a nice way to get a, a pretty strong sacrifice outlet uh, on a land and it's it's not as because there is um uh what was that colorless land from shadows over in where you like paid five and sacrificed five creatures uh, and it turned into abbey? ormondal oh yeah west yeah westvale abbey. abbey i feel like westvale abbey is an immense amount of setup but like hostile hostile like over three turns only having to sacrifice three creatures for a total of three mana i think that's a little bit more palatable obviously like a three seven that like slowly starts pinging your opponents more and more is like a little less of a threat than a nine seven indestructible haste flying lifelink <laughs> but like i think that if you want this in your deck you're gonna want it in your deck because of that um sacrifice outlet i guess is this is this card no, it's not black, is it? It's still colorless. Uh, Just the other side is so yeah, dark. I don't think it's black. It is, it, it's got a black color. That that black pip in oh, the it's, left. Yeah, it's okay. middle left. Yeah, that makes it black. Yeah, so it's got a, a black color identity. Mm. Oh, dang. Dang yeah. is right. Because the border still looks like artifact border. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, with that, we're going to bring another set review to a close and at this point we normally say that we'll be back next week with more content related to this set uh, but we're actually going to be taking a break from releasing content for the next few weeks um, Eric Ainsley and I have been at this every single week for well over two years and Riley has been with us for almost as long uh, so we're taking a much needed respite from content creation and we're going to be back in mid-November with our review of the companion set to Midnight Hunt, which is Innistrad Crimson Vow. Um, but until then, thank you as always for listening and take it easy out there. Yeah, thanks everybody. This is always fun and I hope uh, we'll see you down the road. Oh yeah. yeah, see you around. We'll see it. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you when Crimson Vow is is fully spoiled, and we'll um... the Crimson. Right. Exactly. Okay, that's let's leave. Let's leave on a, a high note, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Bye now. Check out my sword. <laughs> <laughs>